So one of the central components of early childhood education is to develop a sense of belonging. So curriculums will often just use that word, that um, one of our aims um, when a child's in an early childhood centre is to develop a strong sense of belonging. And that's because it does things to your brain. Um, you know, you've got your lower brain, which is similar to what an animal's got, and then this top brain, which is all the flesh, human stuff that, you know, that we want for our kids. Um, basically, it works from the bottom to the top. So if we don't put a sense of belonging into the lower brain, then we're not going to get up to the higher brain. So knowing who you are, where you're from, where you stand in the world, who are the people you are related to, what is the land that you come from, um, what is the language that you use, you know, all of that belonging stuff is not just warm and fluffy, it's really essential to the well-being of a human being. It's essential for you to then go on and be able to develop empathy and higher intelligence and controlling emotion. A lot of this takes of a granted of course you know like um you know in New Zealand if you've grown up as a um, white New Zealander um, you sort of you know you've may have been on that piece of land for four or five generations and you have a sense of belonging it's a bit different in the Aboriginal community with the stolen generation and multiple being moved across the other side of Australia from their land and we had a similar thing in New Zealand with Māori where they're ripped away from their land and I think in America you know they just decide to give you another piece of land that you're not connected to so that um, destroys partly that sense of belonging. But luckily, the land that we stand on is not the only place we get our belonging from. We get our belonging from language, we get our belonging from stories, really. Um, you know, stories are about who we are, mythology. So I think, in light of the stolen generation and people often not being connected to their land, and just modern urbanisation, where we shift to the cities and move away from traditional areas, even more important to keep those stories alive and to really enrich our children's early childhood experience by using those stories so these kids know what their heritage is, where they come from, that sense of pride about who you are, that really does wonders to the lower brain and allows you to develop all that stuff we want, the higher intelligence, the empathy, the focusing of attention, all the really good stuff. So yeah, can't really underestimate the importance of belonging. You know, every human being needs to have that sense of belonging. Um, I know that the, um, in New Zealand, the Māori language, only about 10% of you know, um, Māori can speak the Māori language, but you can really foster a strong sense of belonging, even just with a few words. You know, um, I can speak my native language now because I spent you know, 20 years doing it, but I couldn't speak it as a child. Um, so when I first had my children, I was a teenage parent, um, I just used like three or four words. I'd say kia ora. Um, they always knew this was a puku. We never called it a stomach. It was always puku. The toilet was always whare puku. Um, you know, a few key words like that, and that gives the child the sounds of their language. So there's this process your brain does called pruning, where it prunes away the stuff it doesn't need. And if they're not exposed to any of their language, they'll prune away that native ability to pronounce it. Whereas, just use a few words, and that encourages the brain to keep that. They estimate in the literature it only takes 60 words in a language to maintain all the neural pathways that you need to speak that language natively as an adult. So that means if you learn two lullabies in your um, Aboriginal dialect and you sing those lullabies regularly to your baby, then you lay all the neural foundations for that baby to be able to go and pick up their Aboriginal language later and speak it natively because they would have connect, you know, kept all of those original neural pathways that allow them to be a native speaker. So that's encouraging. Even with the little bit that you've got, use that because it's so wonderful for a sense of belonging. That and stories. It's language and stories all the way.